Okay, what a crazy day at the U.S. Open. Day three recap coming at you hot, off the press. Djokovic through easily. That's not the story, though. The story is Stefano Tsitsipas going out to Dominic Stricker and Casper Rude going down to Zizhen Zhang. Big upsets on the bottom half of the draw, paving the way for Novak Djokovic to go all the way to the final with ease. All of his biggest top seeds on the bottom have lost. We'll get into that. Looking at the draw, Caroline Wozniacki back after having two kids, beats the 11th seed. No big deal. Let's get into it. Lots of stuff to break down. Here's the slice. All right. Thanks for being here. And big news. Scientific study has just dropped. If you haven't heard, that proves that if you subscribe to the slice and turn on notifications, you actually become a better tennis player. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but there's some correlation they're saying between liking and subscribing to this and playing tennis like this guy. So take that for what it is. I'll let you try that and decide, but I appreciate your support. We also appreciate Go Sport being the official bag of the slice to enter the giveaway for the Axiom 12 pack racket bag. We are giving out to one of you at the end of this tournament. You need to go to the link below, sign up for the newsletter, the Go Sport newsletter, give your email, and then subscribe to Go Sport and the slice here on YouTube, and you're entered into the draw. Basic. We'll see you after the tournament. Thanks for being here and get your AG1 if you have thought about trying AG1. Uh, and you're going to do that. It's a great time. I love it. It helps me get great nutrition. And there's a link below with some special goodies for you. We all love goodies, don't we? So what went down today? Wow. Well, a lot. Let's, 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 I don't know where to start from the top. I think the top is Stefano Tsitsipas. Some of you guys were questioning why I was getting, you know, why, why I was so uh, emphatic that he's had a bad season so far um, after I believe the loss in Toronto in the first round there. Some of you guys were like, you've been too harsh on him. Well, I would think, I would, uh, I would argue that he feels similarly to what I feel, which is disappointment and what where he's at. The U.S. Open has always been his worst major. He's like six wins and six losses at the U.S. Open in his career, which is crazy. But my point is, back in 2019, 2020, 21, he was one of the top four or five guys at every major. He was the one knocking on the door. He was the one going, when is it going to be my turn to win a slam, to win a slam? And now it's it feels like he's falling quite far behind. It feels like he's plateaued and maybe even dipped a little bit. And it's really... I, I like the guy. I think he's great. I do believe that he will win a, ma a major at some point, but things are obviously just so frustrating for him right now. Just losses like this. He comes up against guys who are playing well and you know the cards just aren't falling his way. So so what is that? So I heard, I read an article that he that he's parted ways with Philippousis after leaving his dad off the bench at this tournament. Not you know, didn't really change. Um yeah. It's just, it's just too bad to see. It's not, I mean, it's just pressure. I feel like, again, U.S. or French Open 2021, mental damage from Djokovic. And then now you're on a race with these younger guys. Obviously, Alcaraz uh, leaping over him to be at the top of the game. But then you got other guys like Dominic Stricker who come out here, just play great tennis. So hard to beat them when they're playing like that. He's got no pressure. Stefanos has got all the pressure. That dynamic it always gets players. So, yeah, great win from, from Stricker. Let's not take anything away. It was a very close match. We'll get into the stats when we go through the results. Very close match, five-setter. Stefanos did serve for it, so that's going to hurt. Couldn't get it done. And then it came back uh, Stricker's way, and Stricker was relaxed. He's eating a bar at the changeover, right? The changeover to serve it out, and he's like singing along with the song. Uh, now, I spent some time with Stricker. He was at the Winnipeg Challenger, Winnipeg Challenger, that we're representing, the National Bank Challenger in Winnipeg. Um, and he's a funny, go-lucky guy. In the breakfast room, he's always joking. You could hear him from across the room. It's like, 
having jokes with his with his team. Um, he looks intense, but that's just the Swiss in him, I think. So very cool guy. Uh, and he's been waiting for a breakthrough for a while, and I know Swiss Tennis has. So this is definitely his breakthrough into the round three, into round three. Uh, who else lost? I did not see any of this match. Kaspar Ruud going out to Xi Zhang And disrespect, I didn't get a picture up of Xi Zhang, But that's a great result for him as well. Terrible result for Kaspar Ruud who had a lot of points to defend from making the final last year. Um, so he will slide in the rankings to, I believe, ninth in the world. Um, yeah. So both of those guys, Kaspar Ruud and Stefano Tsitsipas, were the last two remaining high seeds on the bottom half of the draw with Djokovic. I mean, high top 10. So I believe Taylor Fritz might be in there, but I'm going to have to check that when we look at the draw. But basically... It could have been Felix Auger and Ali Asim in the fourth round for Djokovic and then Stefano Tsitsipas in the quarterfinals and then either Rude or Runa or Fritz potentially in the, or I might be getting that wrong, in the semifinals. And now it's going to be none of those players except for Fritz, who's still in. Um, so the bottom is just opened wide open. Um, and that's good for players like Tommy Paul. TP come back from two sets down. TP never give up. TP gives his T-shirt to the kid. If you haven't seen it, go follow or go look at our Instagram. Uh, amazing battle there from Tommy Paul playing Roman Safulin, extremely dangerous Russian player. Uh, Tommy goes down two sets to one. Safulin's just beating him from the back of the court. Too big, too powerful, not missing. So third set, Tommy gets out to a good start, seems to be instantly serving better, and coming in behind to serve more. More serve and volleys, getting the net, chopping it up, disrupting the rhythm of Roman Safulin, which worked out great. And I know Coach Brad Stein, who we are close with here, friend on the show, friend of the show, would have loved to see that turnaround. This I you know, I would, you know, I would say that for Tommy, this is this is a match to me that is like almost potentially like career defining. I don't want to get too big on it, but there's just there was such an easy way to lose this match tonight with you know, he's in there. He's had a good season. He's he's up against a really tough player down two sets to love. We've all, play, anyone who's played tennis has just been like, oh, it's just easier. It's like, there's no route back. There's no way to come back. It's easier to just lose and, you know, take the take the prize money and go home. But he battled. He dug in set by set, got it back, played, switched up his style, played better, found another gear for himself. And that knocked Roman Safilin off of his game. And based on the year that Tommy's had so far, semifinals in Australia, Tough year on the clay swing. Him losing this would just be like, you know what? Maybe this is kind of as far as he believes he can get in the ranking, top 14. But comes back in this match. He's going to be the favorite in the next few matches he plays. Honestly, it looks very similar to the Australian Open where he's got a, a nice part of the draws opened up for him and he might play Djokovic in the semifinals. So wouldn't that be huge? Um, but yeah, I think that was a big, big win for Tommy Paul, proving that he wants to be deep in these tournaments. Um that he believes he can be, and that was huge. So big wins today for a lot of guys. Djokovic threw um, very easily. I didn't watch any of it um, because, like I said, didn't have to, really didn't have to. Uh, Caroline Wozniacki, the story uh, on the women's side, in my opinion, so far, two kids, comes back, takes out Petra Kvitova, like one of the best players in the world, 11th seed, Takes her out in three sets. That's just crazy. So let's look at the results from today as we'll see those. We saw Coco Goff come through. Maria Andriva a little bit more simply. 6-3, 6-2. Six, six, Djokovic 6-4, six, 6-1, six, one, six, one, over Zapata. Mariales. Francis Tiafo easy peasy. 6-3, six, 6-1, six, six, over Offner in straight sets. And here we go. Or Sorry, it was in two sets. Wozniacki over Kvitova in two tight sets. What a win for the Dane uh, comes back. David Lee, her NBA husband uh, in the crowd. You love to see it. What a, what a time, what a comeback. That's amazing. So she's into the round, round three, Elise Mertens takes out Daniel Collins, Shvantec over to Seville, Daria Seville. This was sad. Dominic team, some type of thing going on with his abdominals. I didn't get the report on that, but he had to pull out after a tight first set with Ben Shelton. Hate to see that for Dominic team after such a good win in a major. Really, I believe like he has so much more experience. I think he probably would have gotten Ben Shelton. And that was Ben Shelton's 
This is his first time since his run at Australia, I heard, where he won back-to-back matches at the ATP level, uh, which is not good. But he gets the second win in a row there for him, so that's good for him. Right, Rivaikina gets the walk over on Tom Milanovic. Hate to see that. Jen Brady in three sets over Lynette, so that's an upset. Uh, Taylor Fritz, easy peasy, 6-1, 6-2, 6-2 over Verilas. That's good for t- t- uh, Taylor Fritz. So he's still on the bottom. He's alive. The ninth seed. He is the top seed other than Djokovic on that bottom half now. Stricker takes out sits pass, like we said here. Super tight match. I looked at the stats. There's really nothing in it other than, I guess, you would ha- you would like to see. I mean, St- Stefanos won 81% of his first serves. He only won 41% of his second serves. So Stricker was being very aggressive, hitting huge on that. Um, but I do think the lefty of Stricker serves into the backhand of sits pass and and f- forehands into the backhand of sits pass which just too much it wore sits pass down and that slice sits pass really really I, I i've said it before I've, I've i've said it before i really feel like if he had a top 10 slice in the world sits pass would have one or two majors by now if he had like any got anyone's slice like Djokovic. Or Alcaraz, like if he had any of those slices, like if he had a Federer slice, he would be like, I, I don't know, multiple majors in, in my opinion, because it's just such a liability. Guys know they can hurt him there. And if you have a world class slice, you can just sit on the backhand, slice it all day long, move your opponent around with defensive slices and stay in rallies. You saw Federer made a career out of that. And uh, yeah, the rest of Stefanos's game is good enough for sure. So Tough time there, again, for Stefanos at the U.S. Open. Um, other big results, Zhe Zheng Zhang. Wild time at the end there. I didn't see any any of it, but 6-0 for Rude and then 6-2 for Zhang. So let's just look at that. All the stats kind of point towards Zhang. 60 winners, 41 unforced errors. That is great. Um, yeah, win percentage on second serve again. See another top player getting, uh, you know, winning less than half of their second serve points. Great tennis from Zhang. That's uh, that's big. That's big, impressive stuff. Benchich through, Kristia through. Um, Karatsev takes out Karbayas Baena. Hijikita takes out Fuchovic. Six one, six two, six three. Bad loss there from Fuchovic. Um. And then we got some McDonald also bad loss there to Gojo 636464 six, after taking out um after taking out Canadian Felix Alge Ali Seam. So that was a bit of a flop there. Caroline Mukova, 6363, six, three, gets through. Uh Manorino, the 22nd seed, he's through as well. And we got Yuri Vesely taking out Francisco Sorundolo. That's an upset. Big hitting uh Vesely. Both Sorundolo brothers go out hate to see that for the for the argentinian fans um and mensik this guy is jacob jacob mensik is 17 years old from the czech republic he's a big star takes out drew jay he is into the third round now after taking out barrer taking out fanini taking out reedy and uh, those are all great players in qualifying that's big. Uh, so that's a name to remember. And I got put back to the top there. Anyways, Czech Republic, where are we? Um, yeah, Mensik. Menchik, I'm sure. Mensich? I don't know. That's uh, that's a, that's one to watch for sure. Taylor Townsend gets through. Eubanks out to Benjamin Bonzi. Benjamin Bonzi was also in Winnipeg. Great player. And then we got Tommy Paul sit, sitting at the bottom here in five sets uh, over... Over uh, Sefulin. Let's just looking at some of the stats here. Ten aces, win percent on first serve got up at the end there to seventy five percent, fairly low. That's again Sefulin taking huge cuts um, at the, sec- the second serve for Tommy Paul. Seems just like the underdogs feel like they need to do that, and that's a, a theme today in the stats uh, for those players. So yeah, so that's day three. At the U.S. Open, big upsets, like we said. Let's take before we get out of here. Let's take a look at the draws. Um, 
especially the men's singles draw. Is this easier for you guys to see? The bottom. I mean, there's so much, so many names who could theoretically win this tournament on the top, and it is just wide open on the bottom. Djokovic will play Jere, and then he'll either play Vesely or Gojo in the fourth round, and then he'll play potentially Fritz in the quarterfinal, which is the highest seed player he could play, and then either this is crazy. This isn't. I mean, it's not that crazy, but it's fairly crazy. <laughs> One of Karatsev, Shelton, Davidovich, Vakina, Tommy Paul, who is there in Australia, Tiafo. That's not crazy, actually. Um, Manorino, Hijikata, or Zhang will be in the semifinals. So, really, I think the guys who are going to battle for it for sure are Tommy Paul and Francis Tiafo. Who's going to make the semifinal? Um, Tiafo is defending semifinal points from last year. So he'll have a lot to play for. And Tommy Paul, uh, you know, is hungry to become, you know, the number one ranked player in the U.S., I think, if he were to beat TFO and make the semifinals. And then he would get a rematch with Djokovic. And you know what they say? It's easier to play Djokovic the second time than it is the first. I just made that up. I don't know if it is, but I would assume it would be because it wouldn't be so shocking to play his quality, his level. Um, so that'll be interesting to see how that bottom shakes up what are your thoughts what are your ponderances what's your version of the slice leave it down below in the comment section be for section below as always thanks for being here thanks for being part of this community click the links below support the show and we will see you next time here on the slice goodbye <laughs>